Welcome in everybody to Fantasy Pros. This is the Fantasy Baseball Podcast. It is me, Joey P, Joe Pizapia, and today it's the ultimate starting pitcher guy. That's right, me, the Welsh, and our good friend from Pitcher List, Nick Pollock, are going to break down all the sleepers, the busts, and the must-haves at the pitcher position. And of course, the pitching guru, the man who makes the list of all the pitchers, who better to have on this show, Nick Pollock, who also has a very exciting announcement here at the top of the show, because Pitcher List has some new special features going on so pollock tell the people about the pitcher list subbed well thank you so much for having me today yes we launched pl pro today we have our 2023 player projections fueled by our own metric plv which is a pitch quantifier we're so excited about it we also have a live draft assistant tool with it auction draft calculator dfs projections it's all there go to pitchlist.com check out pl pro today there you go. Mm. And speaking of pros, uh, Welsh is a professional photographer now. His uh, yes. picture of Jacob deGrom along with Greg Maddox got picked up <laughs> everywhere. I saw MLB Network had it. Uh, Welsh, what's it like to be famous? That's all I want. Uh, well, I, you know, it's a it's a big deal. I took a picture today with this. It's just a little minor league player on the Royals, a kid named Bobby Witt Jr. We, he wanted yeah. to take a picture with me. He's like, hey, you're the guy that took the Greg Maddox picture, right? No, I mean, it's... <laughs> How amazing would that have been if that was true? It that would have been, been the, the greatest ever. thing ever. The, the, the like, best hey, moment I, I actually... You. The, bed, the best moment I ever had that's relative to that was two years ago in the AFL when I was on the field and I started interviewing Tristan Costas and I was like, hey, I want, I, some people know the story. I was like, hey, I, I want you to watch this. And I, I pulled up my video and he goes, as soon as he pulls it, I pull it up. I'm like, this is my video I have of you. And he's like, are you the Welsh? And I was like, get out of here. Wow. And I was like, so you guys nice. are watching this video? He's like, yeah, I saw that video on Twitter. He also, by the way, did say my name completely incorrect, but we're going to just pretend that he knew 100% no one ever it was the Welsh. Bad, Chris, with you and Bogman. Never. No, it's never. No, no, no one ever screws up your names. What What did he say? I mean, Welsh is pretty easy. What did he he, call he, you? Well, because my the Twitter Welsh? handle, it's like, is it the Welsh? He was just like, he said something like, is the Welsh? He's like, are you is the Welsh? And I'm like, I am is the Welsh. And this is cool. And I was like, this is so exciting. You guys saw this, but uh, no, none of those guys you do sound that. like a Yakov Smirnoff guy. Kind of like stand up, I guess. I am in, in America. I am Welsh, Welsh plays you. Yeah. yeah I'm actually a little Welsh. bit worried because the biggest narrative with that photo is just not how good know, Greg Maddox looks. He, yeah. Greg yeah. Maddox doesn't look super great. And uh, Jacob DeGrom, also, by the way, was supposed to throw on Monday. He didn't. I was out mm -hmm. there today again mm -hmm. just because I had some extra time. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't do anything. He was just mm -hmm. walking around. So he still hasn't thrown. So I've been a little defensive mm -hmm. of it, but. Like him mm -hmm. to throw at some mm -hmm. point, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. and if you're watching on the YouTube channel here, instead of just listening to the podcast, like you should, because the YouTube channel is great, you're seeing my mm -hmm face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's the face there. Now, look, it's important if you haven't already to subscribe to the YouTube channel because Thursday, 4 p.m. Eastern, Justin Mason is going to join us for our first Roto mock draft of the year so if you're into the roto leagues or even if you're just into justin mason or the walsh or the welsh whatever his name is you hang out with us subscribe to the channel and then you're able to watch that not to mention we've already got uh, all those incredible other videos we've got going on there all the pods are on there leading off live will be on there as well so subscribe to fantasy bros mlb channel and when you drop a comment on this very video below we can upgrade you to fantasy pros premium so if you're looking Ooh. for Custom mock drafts, salary cap tools, you name it. We've got it. Picture list has got great tools. We've got great tools. All the tools will make you smart, help you dominate all of your drafts. So go Fantasy Pros Premium today at fantasypros.com slash premium or throw your head out there and a little bit of uh, a luck perhaps could be yours. And if you comment on this video, uh, you might very well get a free premium upgrade. So sign up today if wow. you just don't want to wait for that and take those chances. Again, fantasypros.com slash premium and subscribe to that YouTube channel. Live stream mock 4 p.m. Eastern. All right, let's get to the pitchers, boys. Let's start here at the top. Nick, you are our guest. We'll talk about the sleepers. Who is number one on your list here you want to talk about today for sleepers, for pitchers, and our ultimate guide of 23? Well, you guys took some really interesting pitchers. And I want to talk about all of them, but I'm not. I'm going to let you guys do that. I'm going to give someone that actually is very deep in uh, in ADP in your drafts. It's Garrett Whitlock, who mm -hmm. right now is at 85 of all starting pitchers of Fantasy Pros on ADP. Garrett Whitlock has a couple things going for him. One, he has a sinker that reminds me a lot of Aaron Nola, the way he throws a glove side um, inside to lefties on the front him come back, coming back over. He also has a slider that misses bats at over a 20% rate and a really good change at that. Last year, if he just made a few better ones, he would have gone away in a lot more innings and a lot more starts. The best part about it, my biggest strategy when you're chasing your sleepers this year 
is not to think of it as I have to get my guy in my draft and then I hold on to him for the rest of the year. You're in a 12-teamer. And if you look back at your drafts in previous seasons, you don't have the guys you drafted, about half of them, by June. So you might as well go for guys who could hit, who you also want to start early in the season. Well, guess what? Garrett Whitlock will get the Pirates in his first start. So not Mm. only are you feeling good about chasing something fun, you also get value while you wait to see if it pans out or not. So I'm targeting Garrett Whitlock at the end a lot of my drafts and see him at 85 starting pitcher where he doesn't even get drafted sometimes. He's on multiple of my teams. Yeah, it's funny. I had him on multiple teams last year and uh, because that RP SP eligibility, I thought looking oh, yeah. get value somewhere. Uh, and it was an up and down season for Whitlock for sure. But you saw the glimpses. And I think that, that's what's very exciting. And that rotation spot's going to be his Welsh. I mean, well, you know, that's what I was like, curious about. There's not like, a lot of guys left in Boston at this point. <laughs> Nick, what's your level of comfort that Whitlock is going to be able to lock up the rotation spot? Because oh, I feel yeah, like they're yeah. very it's very volatile with the Red Sox in general. I mean, there's no one else to get it right now. Bayo even has some small injury thing, but we understood that he'd be in the minors anyway to start the year. Uh, Then I think the four is James Paxton. I hope that works out. You can even throw him on here as well if you want as a sleeper. If James Paxton's (laughs) healthy through spring training and throwing 96 or so, then sure, I'd love to take a chance considering he's free in drafts as well, but... I mean, that's it. There, there's no one else at the end of that rotation. The Red Sox for feel the like Red they Sox. were going to like, I feel like we're just waiting and it's going to be like in two days. it be like the Red Sox signed Michael. Pineda. We're all like, oh, what, what are we doing here? And it's, it's going to like knock off Whitlock to go in the rotation. Yeah, I don't know. But I yeah, I, I like I like this call a lot. It's just this is a nice, good, deep sleeper for everybody. Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly. And uh, we were joking about this rotation the other day. It would have been amazing. Like in 2014, this rotation would have been awesome. Paxton <laughs> yeah. sale. An amazing, you know, you throw Kluber. in uh, Kluber in there too with the back-to-back Cy Youngs, but unfortunately, it's uh, that was like nine years ago, so got to move <laughs> on from that. All right, so Welsh, give me a sleeper in 2023 for the starting pitchers. Yeah, one of the guys I've talked about in decent amount minor. Now I didn't go as deep as um as Nick ended up doing. I kind of have this tier of like essentially between like thirty nine and fifty one of three pitchers that I think can really really rise, and one of those is Nick Lodolo, who I've talked about a decent amount. Um. I talked about early like steamer projections like a long time ago. We now have like ATC and Bat X. One thing I thought was fascinating about it was steamer had projected 20 pitchers to go over 200 strikeouts uh, this coming year. The only two of those players outside the top 100 were teammates, Hunter Green and Nick Lodolo. Hunter Green, we've talked about, you know, obviously the slider stuff has been fantastic with the fastball. He had a whiff rate on his slider of 40 percent. Hunter Green did. In contrast, Lodolo, who is way more of an advanced pitcher, bigger spin metrics on it, his curveball, which he used 30% of the time, had a 46% spin rate, which was uh, awesome. All um, Also, the K percentage was around 29%. I don't like the team context with him, but Lodolo is one of those guys with that usage just overall of the pitch mix. I mean, 90, 87 percentile K percentage. Kept batters low, whiff rates were really solid, and he used four pitches 10% or more of the time, which really like just absurd in general to not have to like sit back on that fastball sinker, change up is solid, but that curveball is a big whiff pitch. I think we're going to get big strikeouts from Nick Lodolo this year, and I think there's a lot of room to grow, even on a poor team. We saw Luis Castillo do it before, and Nick Lodolo, I think, is a sleeper this year and really could push top 25, maybe even 20. Now, it's not very often you get a sleeper who's got a track record like Lucas Giolito, but that's the first one I want to talk about because I would have picked him, Joe. I just want to tell well, you, I would, I would have picked him had like you not had him being, you know, kind of grossly undervalued right now. The ECR is at 141 on Fantasy Pros. Uh, the ADP is around 149 overall. He's going uh, at pitcher 46 uh right now off the board according to fantasy pros and and look i understand the era was five last year i get that now the good news is if you look at you know some of the you know deeper numbers the xfip was at 366 so he's only 28 years old and i think that's something we we should not forget and we're not going to just throw away three really good seasons well two in a covid season at least because he was outstanding in those years the strikeout rate was very high he's coming to pounds uh coming to camp 40 pounds lighter too he's in phenomenal shape uh, you know, best shape of your life and all that stuff. But this is a guy that seems like I think last year got off on his mechanics a little bit. And sometimes when you're heavier as a pitcher, that will happen 
or, or sometimes you're not getting the same drive and the same things that you were used to normally. So for all those reasons, I'm buying back into Lucas Giolito. I think that is uh, one of those things that I just want to kind of put out there Kay. right away. And I've got another White Sox guy on my list. Too. Yeah, well, ahead, I want to ask Nick had reactions when you said Giolito. What, what, what is <laughs> what is the reaction? Wait, you don't seem like a sleep. buyer oh, okay. in Giolito. With Lucas Giolito, there, there are a lot of things. One, it's um, you can kind of just throw away all of last season because he Agreed. had the abdominal injury and right. he even admitted that the abdominal injury messed them up the entire year. So that's a really easy way to say like, okay, he's totally going to be fine. And I was with you a lot, Joe, of thinking, oh, man, Lucas Giolito is going around the 50th where it's like 160th overall or something like that. Yeah. I would jump back in at that. And then he started changing his arm circle. And if you remember when Lucas Giolito broke out the first time, the biggest thing that happened is that he had this big, long arm circle. He's like six, eight or something. And he changed it so that I'm going so he makes it short on like that. Right. Yep. Well, he's back to a longer one now. I, I don't know why. I hope it's good for him. I, I I find myself in a situation where there are so many good pitchers. And once you get past like 45 or so, uh, mm -hmm. there's this big collection of rebound guys that you can chase. Oh, huge collection. Delito is mm -hmm. probably at the top of that. And I'm, I am I actually almost put him on the bust one because there's a potential of him busting around 150 or so. It's so volatile to me. This could work out so well. <laughs> it can also just not get back to where it was. But the so risk you're I'm, taking at this point, I don't think yeah, it's something. Yeah, but I'm with the, you uh, that like listen it, to the, I mean, the guys around that. Cool. It's guys right. like Chris Dale. It's Grayson Rodriguez. Right. Like, how many innings are we gonna get out you of him? Who's uh, the one you, you want? Know, Who Lance would you McCullers. want? I'm not touching him right Lance now. With a ten foot no, I'm not would either. you want Sale or um or Giolito, Nick? I want Sale instead. Really? Yeah, see, I want Giolito instead. Yeah, I want Sale because because he was ready to go, and then he had the finger injury, and that's the thing that held him back last year. Okay. Then he punched well, something. The then he fell on a bike. I <laughs> know. Oh, I want Julito. I already said I want to. I I, I, I want oh, to yeah, like Chris go. Sale. I do. The, um, part of my problem. I like Chris Sale. I'm just concerned about him. You know, holding up over a full season. I don't have that, that same concern about Julito. Here's what I don't I'll like about Julito. Pitcher. I know? actually think Julito is maybe the one pitcher in the top fifty that you really can't make a great case for because you have to throw out the entire year last year with the injury, right. with the added weight, with he was really mm -hmm. throwing inside. If you go back, there's a video out there like really inside his body and it kind of explodes on how he threw and he's completely altered that, lost a ton of weight and he's a pretty smart pitcher as well who was dominant the year prior to that. So I kind of throw out next uh, last year and I don't really have awesome things to tell you outside of big weight loss. He has altered, he worked with driveline I think again, and he's altered the way his approach is. And I think a smart pitcher like that is a person that I want to bet on. And he's still young mm -hmm. enough. So that's why that I would go with Giolito. But, you know, yeah. good conversation. Sale, sale. All right. Give us another sleeper. We can't spend all show on Lucas Giolito. I mean, we, <laughs> we can, can, but I don't think everyone's going to be happy. Who do you want? Who, who is this? Nick or Nick? Me? What do you want? Go. Uh, let's go with, I'll give you the ultra sleeper who somehow is at 133. Oh, of ADP of starting pitchers on Fantasy Pros and blows my mind. It's the same idea as Garrett Whitlock, where if you're going to go for someone that you think maybe what they did last year could develop or be good again, I uh, that is Drew Smiley. Believe it or not, the opening weekend of the season, he's going to go up against the Brewers. And I, I cannot emphasize this enough. You are in such a good position in your 12 teamers. If you're able to get a start that is value the opening weekend and then see something that is exciting and be able to drop a guy and get an extra start over everybody else. Drew Smiley, second half of last year was phenomenal. 23% K rate, a lovely sub three ERA. Great whip on that. He went with what I call the Blake Snell blueprint, throwing fastballs up and curveballs down. He did it with excellent command. This was so exciting to watch, and he's in a good situation in the Cubs, and the Cubs got better offensively, a decent defense behind him. I love that matchup against the Brewers. I would love to take him, to take him at the end of my drafts, get that first start. Maybe he maintains that velocity over 93 miles per hour with that sinker, doing exactly what he did in the second half, and you hold on to it, or you get rid of him for some number four or number five star that surprises us all that we didn't go after, and you feel comfortable making the decision to drop Smiley while some other guys, you won't know what to do and you'll have to hold on to them. I call that a hipster, a headache-inducing pitcher stifling the entire roster. Smiley wow, isn't one of really those. That worked out. And right. you can get you can get rid of him early. So those are the kind of guys I like to target. Drew Smiley is one of them. I'll argue that the Cubs gave the illusion of the offense getting better, but I don't know <laughs> if it's gotten much better yet. We'll see. We shall see. Well, just give me another guy on your sleeper list at SP. Who you got? 
Give me the Jesus lizard. Jesus Lizardo is someone I refuse to uh, to quit. 42 on the uh, Fantasy Pros ADP if you're looking at starting pitchers. Velocity came back last year. Early on, he was hitting like 98, 99. He ended up finishing around 96, which was still an uptick for Jesus Lizardo. I'm a sucker for um, multi-mix pitchers. And this guy, actually, I believe if I'm looking at this correctly, he had four pitches that he used 20% of the time. So true, true mixes between the sinker curveball change up fastball um, changes up the way he approaches to he messes with timing which I really really love uh, spin numbers were really solid and you don't really see this often we'll see maybe like three of the four he decreased the batting average against every single one of his pitches in 2022 over 21. So what, or in, yeah, over 21, it's, it wasn't like, all right, you know, the curveball and the fastball was better, but he got hit up a little bit over here to compensate. No, every single pitch was worse against Jesus Lazardo for the year. I also think the team does a really good job in the development overall. We saw what Sandy did. I think Lazardo is going to make a big step. He's a 30% K guy, which I love. Give me strikeouts. Give me pitch mix. Give me that better team context. Jesus Lazardo, kind of like Lodolo. He's actually behind Lodolo. And I think yeah. there might be an argument that Lazardo could be ahead, uh, but you'd see in drafts he goes Hell. further down. I think it's going to yeah. be a top 25 guy this year. Love Jesus yeah. Lazardo. Curious, Welsh, uh, does the 278 X plug from last year scare you at all? Is that something I really think about too much? I'm not trying, I'm not trying to put it too much into my uh, analysis. What about you, Nick? Does that, does that number scare you? His 278 X plug? Uh, I have no idea what an X plug is, but uh, you don't know what yeah. an X plug is. No. You haven't heard about X plug? <laughs> yeah, what? you guys it, are making on, this up pretty much right now. Right? We wouldn't make up. Are we making up a stat? What are you talking about? Wait, wait, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Nick Pollock hasn't heard of X plug. Yeah, okay. Anyway, so Jesus Lazardo's <laughs> health is the big is the big problem. I uh, and that is he's he had a forearm injury last year. I uh, this is a bit you guys worked <laughs> on beforehand. <laughs> you just went past it. Nick, in the last episode, I'm gonna I'm gonna give everybody, and this is something we're gonna do. Joe has the <laughs> best idea ever. So you obviously yes. didn't listen. So we were going on and we were talking about stats being made and how much they were. And Joe mm -hmm. was like, we should like make up a stat. And I'm like, that's great. And I threw yeah. out, I'm like, X plug. Well, Joe and I, we have tech, I have a text message thread on my phone of a plan that we had to see if we could get you. And I told no. Joe, I was like, we're not going to be able yeah, to get the Nick audience, on not this. A the audience knows about the this. audience well, knew what thing. was happening. Not you a passed chance. the test, so here you go. We didn't. We didn't sneak X plug by you. Uh, so <laughs> here's the uh, here's the fun part. Now you get the opportunity. Uh, Justin Mason will be our guest on Thursday. Do you want to keep X plug, or by the end of the show, you have the opportunity to create a new stat that sounds like a stat that we might be able to catch somebody off guard with. So yes. think about like, that. Give it a name. Just think about it. I got it. it. It's PL. You can make it almost plug. You can make it PLVG. Uh, so it sounds like it's mine, so it which is like PLV. Like PLV G. No, we should do PLUG. We should do the, the, the PLUG. <laughs> the same <laughs> we should be like, uh, you know, Nick just dropped picture, uh, picture list oh, plus God. and all that, and they've got the PLUG. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's it. We're going to PLUG. Actually, that's PLUG. what I wear in the winter, my PL Uggs, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're really comfortable. Uh, and they're very you know what? So right. comfortable. Nick, Nick is a pro. Everyone should know that. He immediately didn't fall for the Look bit. He guys. called us on it. And you went to go analyze. So none of us could focus because yeah, we were waiting there, for there you to like explode. A, a half a millisecond where he looked in the... He's just also like, wait like, a minute. You gave 278 and like you never worried about a 278. Whatever that is. That's like what the most that, like that normal like pretty, thing. I don't know. That sounds like a number that could be troubling. I don't know. I mean, like a, what were you saying about Lazardo? number? Though. Is that the problem? Maybe. Yeah, I think it, it was, was too high. What, what was what was about Lazardo though? You had some good analysis Ooh. before your brain. X plug did melt your brain a little bit. We will admit that. I was that. like, I know that X also use plug, which is like, <laughs> mm, that's too close. <laughs> anyway, um, Luzardo is an interesting one. I love him. I think the curveball is really good. And then came back with the changeup really good. The velocity they gained at the beginning in the first half was there when he came back from injury. A little bit less was still there. The problem is health. And it's interesting at 42, that's actually pretty much right where I have him ranked personally. Because it's right, right after all the other secure ones. I, I hope it works. I really do. It's just one of those where you pick him up and you love the first couple starts and you just pray you don't hear any news about him. Yeah, that's, that's uh, I had tough. a day He's last a tough year. He's for me, Pollock, I got to tell Both you. Lizardo and Tyler McGill, and they both got injured on the same day. Oof. And I was so... I was so upset. You guys <laughs> both just lowered your, you both have lowered your X plug. So I just want you yeah, to know that's the X plug is lowering plug in my eyes. I think I have like four uh, X plugs in this episode so far. That's possible. my X plug. Four Everyone of them. should do a shot every time we say it. Uh, we should do uh, Lance Lynn next on the show because that's another guy. 
Giolito's teammate where <clears throat> like I know <laughs> I get it last year was absolutely dreadful first seven starts seven five ERA I was buying him everywhere and I told people I did a video here about it last year on the YouTube channel I said look just for the second half just buy him okay he's he's a pitcher that's been around forever we have to just trust he's going to turn around and guess what 252 ERA over his last 14 starts in the second half last year so he was seven to four the the whip went from 1.5 for those first seven to 0.98 so i'm not really concerned but i think what happens is people just look at the bottom line they'll look at what they got last year out of him or what they didn't or the frustrations or the fact he's an older pitcher and those guys tend to we've seen it with charlie morton year over year we see a lot of the guys the older pitchers get take you know kind of pushed to the side and they're not as exciting as the lodolos or some of the hazel Lazardos of the world and i get that but i think at the same time Lance Lynn is a guy that I can plug in there and get Excellent. win potential. He's going to hopefully make 30 starts this year. And I think that's a pitcher that I want and going at 41 right now, 134 overall, that's a pitcher I think is worth investing in. I'll give my last sleeper and then we'll go back to Nick. We'll keep things moving here uh, before we do just a reminder too, that draft simulator is out there. Fantasybros.com slash draft wizard. So if you want to see where these pitchers are going, Go download the Draft Wizard app, go to fantasypros.com slash draft wizard and start to get a sense of where some of these guys are. I mean, Nick's giving you some deeper sleepers. I'm giving you some guys more in that 40 range. But the next guy on my list is Kodai Senga, who's going as the 86th pitcher overall, 284 as the overall player. Uh, I saw the footage of the ghost fork uh, against Pete Alonso yesterday. And Pete Alonso had some really interesting things to say about it. Uh, and he's a pretty good hitter last time I checked. I, I understand that there's always that concern when you have a pitcher coming over from Japan about how is they going to hold up to the workload, taking the ball every fifth day. It's a different schedule. It's a different universe. But I think at the same time, he is too low in drafts right now. So if you're doing early drafting, best ball, anything like that, I'm jumping on this guy. Because even if he's brilliant in the first half, that's enough to trade him and then go look for other things in a regular early draft format, non-best ball. So to me, I'm investing all over. And if you get a good first half out of him, he's going to pay back that ADP in best ball anyway. So go look for Senga. Uh, Nick Pollock, I'm fascinated to hear your thoughts on Senga before you get to your next guy. Guess who he's facing in his first game of the year? You love this. Nick is playing for the first game of the season. And then after that, he's going to say, I'm the winner. I won every league. And he's going to walk <laughs> away from all of them. I love this. Well, no, but think about it, though. When you're in your leagues, how many times do you pick up guys in the first two, three weeks? Uh, oh, the fluidity of April is so important, uh, especially yeah. with guys at the end of your drafts that you aren't expected to hold on to. So go after the similar upside players who you also get value out of out of. And he gets the Marlins first. That's a start where I don't know it's exactly hard. what we're going to get from Kodai Senga, but I would love to test it out and see against the Miami Marlins. So I'm a huge fan of this one. I actually have Kodai Senga in my 50s uh, for my top 100. Me too. So. See, I, it's funny because on top FP three on my ranks, yeah. and I just uh, Welsh just updated his rankings. I've got him in the top 50. I don't know where Welsh has him, but yeah, get to your last. Wonder now. Yeah, go ahead. You check that out. In the meantime, Nick, give us your final sleeper, and then we'll move on to the bus at starting pitcher. After it's this. wild. I don't know if he's actually a sleeper at this point because i've heard a lot of things and there's been a lot of helium uh toward drew rasmussen but uh we ran our projections and our metric plv absolutely adores drew rasmussen uh cutter slider are both phenomenal throws hard as well avoids a lot of hard contact is part of a winning ball club with the tampa bay rays could be someone I'd, i don't really care what the first start is with him i think this is actually more about the whole product of what he does and how the rays can extract the best version of him moving forward there's just so much to like missing bats that he hasn't done quite yet. And the reason why you have Drew Rasmussen at 52 uh, right now is because he hasn't missed as many bats as we think he should. So all of a sudden you could blink and he has a 25-26% strikeout rate for a winning ball club without any rate that's ever been over 3-5 and a 110 whip. Wait a second. That's a stud here at 52 for starting pitchers. So I'm I'm trying to chase Drew Rasmussen wherever I can. Yeah, that's a it's a good okay. point. And I think if the helium goes let's say another six, seven spots. Is that, is well, that getting he's out of part of that for club for me as like Giolito as Chris right. sale as those. So it depends if you want to take more risk like Giolito and sale, or you want to do something a little bit safer like Rasmussen. It depends on how the draft is made. All right. Welsh, close us out here on the sleepers. Who's your last one? By the way, on saying I have him at 55. So that's where I've got him. In yeah, my there rank. you go. So, we're all there. Yeah, we're in that, we're in that yeah. same general you, vicinity. You You're not on my TGFBI, right? We're good. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I think they just released it. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, You're just making up words again. See? This oh, guy, yeah, that's the X plug, the X TGFBI. Yeah. Um, 
everybody knows if they've been listening to me this offseason, in one way I was going to bring this guy up. So let's just do it in sleepers because it falls under that. Even though I would also say this is like a must-have for me, it's Jeffrey Springs. Uh, Jeffrey Springs I kind of talk about all over the place. He's actually one spot higher than Rasmussen, so I'm going to take that side of it. I think one of the biggest arguments against him is the innings as they pushed him out last year, but he got to 135. I think projections are selling him low, anywhere from the 120s to 140s. I think he could push 160s, and he was phenomenal last season. I talked about this on Fantasy Pros earlier in the year, but he had a 2.46 ERA with a 3.32 Sierra. That Sierra was tied with Zach Gallen. He had a 26.2% K percentage, which was higher than you, Darvish, just lower than Zach Gallen. I'm not trying to like give him that he's going to be that player, but it's a 9.5K per nine, a really, really good ERA that was maintained even on XFIP or Sierra. Doesn't walk a bunch, right, at two walks per nine. And... um Overall, slider, uh, slider, by the way, went up two uh, miles per hour, uh, which you love to see on that in general. Jeffrey Springs is a player that I think is going to push the innings, and I think he's a fantastic pitcher that I want as a core piece of all of my drafts. So I think it's kind of like where Nick has Rasmussen, that's Jeffrey Springs for me. And uh, whether it is I have to have him or he's a sleeper, he qualifies for both for me. All right, there you have it. So those are the sleepers. Let's move on to the busts. And I'll kick things off here. No surprise. I mean, I'm just not paying top five overall pitcher price for Jacob DeGrom. I'm not doing it. At 10, I'm curious. At 15 to 20, I'm definitely listening and willing to take that leap. But at five, it's nuts. It's nuts. I have seen, or should I say not seen, enough of Jacob DeGrom over the last two years. And look, there's no debate. When this guy is right, he is unhittable. He is special beyond belief. The numbers are insane. They're like setting some kind of weird MLB The Show setting and everyone else is terrible and you're the greatest thing ever. That's what watching Jacob DeGrom is like. But unfortunately, it's, it's him going out there. And, and the fact that we got off to this rocky start really just kind of is driving this home. Now, I don't know over the next couple of weeks, if it takes a while for him to ramp up, if he's not throwing anytime soon, what this is going to go to do to his ADP. And if it does start to shift in the next week or so, then I'm going to be more intrigued. But this early ADP of him five overall at SP, I can't get there. I won't get there. I'm just not going to do it. Uh, Nick, I'd love to hear your thoughts on DeGrom because, look, nobody's debating how good this guy is. It's off the chart. It's something like almost we've never seen. It's like Koufax-esque at times. So, is this price too much for you or are you taking the leap of faith, even though he's gotten off to already an auspicious start? I mean, I don't draft pitchers in the first two rounds anyway, because I think the values and hitters at that point, but Agreed. if I am well, going to do a, it, that's a good right. see, And that's on the guy pitcher list. That's literally the Twitter well, handle. Well, my strength is getting pitchers, so I'm not going to pay right. a premium for them. Right. Right. But if I were, I'm not going to take the one that has the biggest risk of busting for me by injury. Right. So why I, I, it doesn't make sense to me to I have to it. chase that when I can have all these other great pitchers that are more secure to get me value through the year. So all as right. much as I want to have Jacob DeGrom on my team, because my gosh, he's so fun to watch. And incredible. Yeah. It's just too risky for me. And I'm kind of rooting for the Rangers a little. I think it's going to be fun if the Rangers are better. They've got oh, some yeah. decent talent and they've got a, an actual rotation. They have more depth than the Angels do. I'll tell you that much. They are like top to bottom as a roster. They got more depth. All right, they Nick, don't have the us... wings, though. They don't. <sighs> uh, the wings. Where's Tony Danza when you need him? All right. Uh, <laughs> hey, Nick, give us your, your next favorite bust. What you got, huh, Nick? Uh, I got My Max Tony Scherzer. Danza voice. Max Scherzer. Max Scherzer. The same idea. Used the same to be idea. Teammates with the grub, and, eh? and you, th- <laughs> you throw in the same idea of injury risk with Max Scherzer. But also the fact that his stuff is getting a little bit worse year to year. His fastball has declined. Mm-hmm. We saw. What happens when the home runs actually become a problem in the playoffs against the Padres? It was as if all of his home run regression through the season just snapped in one moment as he allowed, what was it, five home runs in that game against the Padres? Do we have to relive these things? I don't know. I, I wouldn't be yeah. shocked if uh, if we saw some sort of regression again from Scherzer in this way. And I see the 229 ERA and the, uh, the 0.91 whip. And you think, no, he's just absolutely a stud. How can you ever think that? I understand, and I'm not saying that the quality of inning will be not great for Max Scherzer, but I'm seeing him go in the top 10 a lot, and I think people aren't realizing how many amazing pitchers there are in the top 20 mm-hmm. that I'm not going to go up to pick 11 uh, to get Max Scherzer. I have to wait until maybe 17, 18 to do that. As I, I was originally more aggressive on Scherzer in my updated rankings and now have him further back 
Uh, I think that Scherzer is a too p- high of a potential bust for me to be chasing in drafts. Do you like Verlander? Uh, if you're talking about I like the Verlander more than Scherzer, yes. I agree. Okay. I agree. Uh, and the quantity of Scherzer is in question too. I'm more confident in the quantity of innings I'm going to get out of well, right. Verlander than I am Scherzer. Uh, Welsh, who is uh, on your bust list? And I got to tell you, this first name of yours, I don't like. I don't like the second name you, either, to tell you the truth. You I don't guess. like that I have them on there, or you agree yeah, with me? Yeah, because these are two guys that I, I think are right in that sweet spot where I'm happy to get them. You're doing them. great. You're doing great, Welsh. Don't let yeah. sour grapes, Welsh. Oh, it's there. It's fine. Well, Keep going. It's yeah, what's happening there. here? Dylan Cease. Yeah. It's don't, it, Dylan Cease. Don't make a sandwich. Yeah. I don't like the high, the super high walk rates. It's almost four walk per nine this past year. He had a 2-2 ERA, uh, a 3-5 XFIP, which is quite a bit different. Left on base percentage is not going to be sustainable. It's like 82% this past year. That's going to come down a little bit. Strikeouts came down a little bit. Uh, weighted pretty heavy on 14 wins. I just think he's just volatile. And... I don't think I need that. Kind of like what you guys are talking about with DeGrom in that general vicinity. What's the great thing about Dylan Cease? It's like elite strikeouts. But I think it screws with your whip. I don't know if the wins are going to be maintainable. I don't like the walks just in general. I think uh, eight, eight losses in there is something to kind of stare at a lot that's left on the table. And there's a little bit of luck factor in there. I just look and I go, I don't need, I don't care about the elite strikeouts in that respect because there's a lot of good pitchers that can kind of swing and fly in around that area. And he doesn't fall into a spot where I, I ever actually draft him. Uh, I would rather reach a little bit. I might be on my own. I'd rather reach a little bit from McClanahan and Strider than even care about Cease, or I'd rather wait and sit back and get players like Luis Castillo, Joe Musgrove. He just, I I think like that is the peak 13 is like the peak of where he's going to be. And I think the volatility of who he is as a pitcher has like outside the top 20 um, downside, if you will. I just silenced the room. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I think a little uh, glitch there, but here, here's, here's my question uh, for you. Drop Nick Pollock when it comes to Dylan C's Dylan C's, um, Clearly, if you look at the the splits, you know, first half, second half, you know, still pretty close, except the strikeout rate did decline the second half. Is that right? Yeah. Is that a signal to you of what Welsh is talking about? With Maybe the 10% a little percent walk rate, man. by the way. I, I don't know if you remember me last winter saying that Dylan Cease was not going to be anything. Obviously, I was wrong. I did not expect him to increase his slider usage as much as he did because the fastball and the curve are still not nearly as good as we want them to be. He leaned so heavily on that slider, got a ton of strikeouts with it. It's great, but the walk rate is still there. It's so rare, as Welsh mentioned, for someone to have such a high walk rate and be that successful. The whip is going to be that problem. You can, yeah, as you said, the strikeout rate wasn't even there in the second half. How much can we really buy into this? So in the end, DC is comical to me at this draft spot. All right. I'm not going to belabor this next one because I already kind of touched on it. It was Chris Sale because I'm it, Nick makes a good point. Well, when I, he came back, he was ready to go. But again, another injury. But I'm also looking at the age of Sale. I'm looking at the um what he's got ahead of him here with this boston red sox team which i think is going to be a difficult trying season potentially and they're looking up in that division at three possibly four teams that are better than them right now i mean we we could joke about the orioles all we want but last year the orioles were no joke the orioles showed up to play and there's some more help coming for the orioles and guys like gunnar henderson and grayson rodriguez so I'm looking at Chris Sale and I'm just saying, okay, on a nightly basis when he goes out there and some of these matchups he's going to have, and I know it's the balanced schedule again, so it's a little less AL East centric. I'm just concerned that am I going to get 25 stars out of Chris Sale at this stage in his career? I think that's a real question. And this is kind of like the DeGrom situation too, where it's do I want to pay for that and where he's going? And Nick has been talking quite a bit about well, this this clump of pitchers here. He's in the same group of Lucas Giolito, Joe Ryan, uh, Charlie Morton, Jeffrey Springs, Drew Rasmussen. I like Brady Singh. Like I like a lot of these pitchers in this range. And Freddie Peralta. I mean, if I'm looking for upside, man, that guy's got it. Chris Sale is more just a wing and a prayer, and I just don't think I can get there in that same group of pitchers. Had he been after these pitchers, and am I getting a little bit bigger discount? I'd be all in, and I think he's worth it there. But to me, that's the spot where I just I still can't draft him over some of those guys. And they've already all those guys are basically on our list. We just talked about for the sleeper list. So I think that becomes a tough sell, too. Let me ask you, who do you think pitches more innings this year? Chris Sale or Jeffrey Springs? That's That's a a great question. question. Of course it is. I I said that you can't say the hardest thing that we do in the offseason is trying to predict volume. So whatever your gut says, yes, that's the one. Jeffrey, yeah, Jeffrey Springs. Springs. Uh, okay, so so Nick <laughs> Pollock said Jeffrey Springs. I'm going with Sale just for the nope. heck of it. Then why not? Nope, wrong. 
All right. <laughs> well, I mean, well, well, bigger picture on sale, Nick. We heard throughout all Chris Sale's career that eventually he was going to break down, right? It didn't happen as soon as everybody thought it was going to. And now, I remember in Tim Lincecum's career, all we heard was, he's going to break down. It's going to be terrible someday. And then it was. Sure. It happened a little sooner. Is this just everybody eventually just being right? Are we at no. the end of Chris? That was that was a lot of the W uh, mechanics, which is essentially the way that you'd bring back both your elbows and everything, which everyone does. Um, that was go. something of a decade ago. Um, but I, I, I completely understand all the hesitation of sale, and this is past that point where I could call the cliff in drafts where I need to have at least four guys before this that I trust through the year. And mm-hmm. I feel in your 12 teamers that you ha- you have guys that you draft the four of them that you actually hold on to and everything else is you trying to do the burn and churn until you find like an amazing rotation. And All so right, if Pollock. I'm chasing sale, it is for that. Uh, I sure. it, it's possible. It might work out. It might not. And that's OK. Just don't hold on too long if it doesn't work out. That is fair. Uh, all right. So, Nick, give us another uh, picture on your list here of bus for 23. I am not touching Tristan McKenzie. Mm-mm-mm. I am so sorry, buddy. I, I will say he's one of the few that I really care about best shape of your life because if he actually adds mass to him, he might get more stability when it comes to pitching and, and mechanics right. and it will allow him to locate more consistently because he's certain he was 160 pounds last year. Um, wouldn't it be awesome if he lost like weight? Fastball. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, I, that I didn't mean to interrupt you, but like, wouldn't that be awesome? They're like, when kids came in, and he lost like 100, he lost like 15 pounds this camp. We're like, what? What do we do? You know, when he, he turns to do his uh, his delivery, all of a sudden disappears for a moment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but I, no, I, Tristan McKenzie, his fastball, I don't think is nearly as good as it performed last season. He was inconsistent with his curveball bounce far too many. And that slider, I mean, you flip a coin if it's there on a given day. And I think he got away with a lot last year. Uh, PLV does not like him. Our projections have him as a four ERA. Um, I think he's going far too early in drafts. And Tristan McKenzie is someone that could actually continue to develop and prove me very wrong. But if he replicated exactly what he did last season uh, from stuff wise and everything, I think it will not have the same fortunate results for him. Okay. Uh, Tristan McKenzie, certainly a very trendy pick this year after a big strikeout total tough to square up to not a lot of hits given up by him, but look, certainly the frame is something we could talk about for days and days. Uh, he's been able to overcome that. We shall see. Well, should give me another guy on your bus list for 23. Who is it? You know, also say philosophically, I find it really hard for pitchers outside like the top 30 or 35 to be like labeled like bus just based on cost. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, of course they can. But like when you really are focusing on like pitchers that were major disappointments, that's why I tend to focus and kind of look at the top end. And one of those guys that this is really two pieces that are battling against each other is Shane Bieber. And if you're playing in like a quality starts league, it's fantastic points for going longer innings. That's probably pretty good. I don't like, by the way, he, he's right next to C. So him and C's are next to each other. So you can tell that's a range where pitchers that I don't want. I don't like like across the board velocity decreases with every single pitch. I also don't like across the board spin losses on every single pitch. I don't like those things with him. The problem is he is one of the best command pitchers in baseball. And, you know, he was able, he was able to buck the trend. I, Nick, I think you were with me, everybody. When we saw the velo was down and we saw the spin was oh, down, yeah. we were all like, sell, 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 get the hell out of here. This is a huge worrisome thing, but the dude was able to kind of break through it. You know I mean? He still, he had an expected ERA. His ERA was 220, I think. And he had an expected ERA of 270, which is still really good. His, um, it, Sierra was a little bit higher. It's higher than Jeffrey Springs. I think it was like three, four, eight. So I think those are early warning trend signs that this isn't like a, a guy like Kershaw, you know, who or, or Verlander. We, we saw this in a couple different places with pitchers where they have to learn to pitch with different like velocities and they have to learn to become different pitch. Like Bieber's already that guy. Bieber's already a pinpoint across the uh, across the zone type of pitcher, but now you're losing spin on your pitches and you're also losing velocity across the board. What else can you change to? You just have to keep hitting your points. I think he's going to become more hittable. He costs a, still a pretty decent amount, top 15 SP overall, and I'm just not really here for it. So he's going to be one of my busts. I think it's going to be hard for him to return a top 15 SP this year. All right. Uh, mine's kind of like shooting fish in a barrel. I mean, the guy had uh, 16 wins last year. Uh, 
I, look, I'm a sucker for strikeouts, and Tony Gonson's not exactly blowing the doors off in that category. I like guys who can get out of jams by striking guys out, period, end of story. I'm not trying to take away what he did last year. I think it's great that we could find guys in the league that can pitch. It's great for real baseball. This is fantasy baseball. That's my problem. So uh, I Welsh knows I have my questions about the Dodgers this year, too about some of that depth on that team, period. And I think San Diego is going to give them all they can handle in that division. But more to the point, once again, I think this is the classic thing of this guy had an incredible year where everything broke right. Do I necessarily want to go chase that? I think the answer is no. Again, in this range of 40 SP overall, there's just other guys that I think will have way more upside, way more intrigue. Nick Pollock, I can't tell if you were sipping the tea waiting to yell at me or sipping the tea in, in agreement. Gosh, no. Oh, okay. Gonsolin is so overvalued right now. Oh, man. He was the number Crazy, one right? benefactor of the shift. We have a stat called hit luck, which essentially says how many hits you should now or should you're not have allowed. On us. Don't, no, don't no, try hit to luck play is, our it's, game on us. It's don't amazing. It's, it's so cool. He uses PLV to say, based on the pitches you threw, how many hits should you have allowed? Tony Gonsolin was 100th percentile. He allowed over 50 more hits than he should have last year, which was essentially about 80% of the amount of hits he actually allowed, which was about 75 uh, it's insane. He is not going to perform nearly the same way that he did this past year. The Dodgers defense is worse. The splitter got away with so much over the heart of the plate that it won't again. I am so far away from Tony Gonsolin in 20. You're going to hate me for this. Um, you have a pitcher list stat. That's a luck. You should call it pluck. I'm just saying, please call it. <laughs> we pluck. actually considered it. I'm not even joking. Of course you did. Genius. I, of oh, course, yeah. I went pluck. through every single word that started with PL. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's well, the pluck. The, it's no, the pluck. It is All hit right. luck because it's just much more easier to understand. There you go. Pluck. All right, Nick, give us your final bust at the SP market before we get to our must-haves coming up. Uh, I have a friend of mine, Stephen Lyman, who I met at First Pitch Arizona. I, a doctor, he's incredibly smart, knows everything about injuries, and he is terrified of Freddie Peralta and his shoulder hmm. injury. And I have to agree with him on this one. Um, we've seen multiple guys have shoulder injuries and they just are not the same after. Look at Frankie Montes right now. We thought, oh, he'll be all right for the season. It's okay. Now he's missing time. You see Aaron Ashby's shoulder now missing months. And we saw that from Freddie Peralta last year. And we saw from Jack Flaherty missing a lot of time. I am just staying away from this. I know how good Freddie Peralta is on a quality per inning basis. But boy, it just feels like a headache I can just easily remove myself from. I'm staying away from Freddie Peralta. So even though down the stretch things were pretty good for him that wasn't enough to convince you no nope, because uh, he you didn't look pitch at August, enough he had that one final start that was finally i believe four innings where he had over 50 pitches but it's not right. enough for me i'm terrified that the, he didn't well, get he surgery he didn't do anything to repair it it was just a it'll be fine right. we just got to rest and rehab it this is not something that just goes away well, what's so interesting is the six starts he had in August that k per nine was all the way down to seven and then he went back on the il yeah. and then oh. mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's a shame, too. I mean, Peralta is, look, man, it, that is a, a stunning talent, but we've seen this before. It's just you got to be able to stay on the field. You got to take the mound every fifth day. All right, Welsh, close us out here. Who's the last bust for you? Uh, yeah, people not, might not like this one because he. there's a point where I actually think he was kind of a value here. Uh, coming in at 32 on the Fantasy Pros ADP, I'm going to put Kyle Wright on the board. couple okay. reasons. couple reasons in here on Kyle Wright. Uh, pretty blue on the baseball savant page. You, if you look in, hard hit, hard hit percentage is a little bit weighted. He also gave up that O'Neill Cruz hit. So his max EV is 122.4 <laughs> if you look on giving up here. But also like average exit velocity, lower 35 percentile. Uh, XERA, XWOBA, under the 50 percentile XBA. K percentage is like just average overall. Also, this is just not a strikeout player. I mean, it's under 9K per nine. So I think that gives uh, takes away a little bit of the wiggle room. He also had an expected ERA that was close to 390 uh, or, you know, 3.9 versus his 3.1. And He's weighted so heavily on 21 wins. We saw this with Ian Kennedy before. How many guys are going to pull back on the wins? I think you obviously, I'm not breaking any news here, but like you have 13 wins, you're going to lose a ton of your overall value. He doesn't strike out a whole bunch, but he does have the context of the Braves, which is cool. It's just like 32 seems a little bit high for him, and I'm not going to be into it. He also just, like I said, he gets hit pretty hard. I think there was some luck factor and some big changes that happened. So I will probably be avoiding Kyle Wright if it's going to cost me a top 35. Five SP, pretty good defensive team. If you're going to get hit around, at least you're sure. with the Braves. You know they, the teams can catch the support. ball. 
a lot of yeah, run, support run support too. They catch the ball. Look, I, I understand, you know, there's some flukiness into winning 20 games. You don't see a lot of guys win 20 games anymore, but the fact that you do that to me, it knows, you know, how to find outs in the lineup and you know where to get them. Nick, what do you think about Kyle? Wright? No, no, I, I, I had Gonsolin and Wright on my list and then I had to change it because you guys both put them on. Oh, I mean, we I sent it to you at the hard, same time, you know. That's, I know, and I know. And wait I, all weekend and party, Look, I can do this for days. Know, back the X plugs, that's I'm, up to you. Yeah. I'm amplifying your stances, which is wonderful. Uh, <laughs> hard contact rate of 28% for Kyle Wright last year was 120th in the majors among all of the top 200 starting pitchers. Um, 137 in PLV. That is below average uh, stuff, essentially, um, from Kyle Wright. Not going to sustain itself. The main concern we had with Kyle Wright entering last year was that his command was just not good enough. It wasn't when we saw him before and we were thinking that he was going to adapt this year. It really wasn't that good. It was just a curveball that got over the plate enough. I really don't think there's enough depth inside his arsenal for Kyle Wright to survive like this again. I'm very much out. I believe I have him in the 50s. So to see him at 32 or 31 is far too high for me. All right, let's talk about our must-haves. This is going to be easy. I'm just going to run down my three real quick. It's Christian Javier is the first one. Everybody who knows oh, yeah. me, it was my guy last year. And everyone said, but he's not in the rotation. I said, yet, yet. Just give it time. It's going to happen. Guess what? It did. And if you took him in his cost last year, it was crazy. He is at SP22 right now, and I still want him regardless. He's a must-have for me. I understand we could talk about what the second half could be with innings and all that stuff as it piles up. But he is just so electric. I want the talent on my team. And he's a must in any kind of startup. They're a keeper dynasty league draft. Luis Severino is next on my list at number 33 overall at the SP's 109 overall total. I think Severino's in a good spot because Cole and Rodon now really get all the attention. Severino can just kind of get back to being himself. It was very encouraging what he did last year coming off the injury. Another year removed from the Tommy John, I think will only be better here for Severino. So I think when you're looking at players in those good ecosystems, good teams, Severino is one of those guys. And I think the fact that he doesn't have to carry a rotation like he did a few years ago before Garrett Cole got there, I think is a lot less pressure on him. And I think that's good mentally. And Joe Ryan, number 46 starting pitcher overall, 148. Uh, Joe Ryan, to me, I think is one of these guys that's just slowly chipping away at being a very good pitcher. And I think there's possibility he takes a leap this year. I think that Minnesota team is very good. And I think you're going to get, uh, you look at last year, you know, the 3.55 ERA, the 110 whip. You saw all the earmarks of a guy starting to figure it out. It wasn't always perfect, but I think this is a player that's heading in the right direction. And I want him on my team when he does. Uh, Welsh, let's get to your must-have guys. Who you have? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, the top of the list I have higher than most, so I kind of view him as a must-have. It's Shane McClanahan, and I know it's tough to be like a top ten pitcher. You must have. It's just you can get him. You can. I think he's a top five overall SP this year, and he seems to go and drop down. I love the changes he made. A baseball savant page is very sexy. I bet the uh, pitcher list pages are very sexy as well. The changeup was phenomenal. Everything he did, he pounds the zone. I am all about Shane McClanahan. I must have because I, I really think he could be the number one pitcher this year. Uh, coming in at number two, I've got Logan Gilbert. Logan Gilbert. Is- has always been a I can throw whatever pitch I want and any count, which I've, I love, of course. I love the offensive additions and Teoscar Hernandez there on the team. Defensively, they're solid. And um, if you hadn't heard, Logan Gilbert also looks like he's adding a splitter to his repertoire, which might open up some strikeout potential for Logan Gilbert. He's just a big force. Mm-hmm. Imagine a, you know, a big splitter coming off of that six foot eight arm. And then finally, I'm going to tack it down with Blake Snell. Oh, man. My boy, Blake Snell. Oh, man. Blake, Blake Snell, Snell. Man. Everything Every we talked about. Every podcast, Welsh. Every one know, I've I'm ever sorry. done with you. Dude, you gotta do Blake I, I was, Snell, like, boy, I, I was doing a show with on CBS, and Frank, like, <laughs> He called on me to do it. And I was like, what are we doing? Like, we're, I'm, it's, it's a problem. It's a problem. But Spore at some point <laughs> is going to like call me out with him and it'll have to end most likely. But uh, Blake Snell, you know, really solid uh, second half last year, 219 ERA versus his 522 on the front. You have said it. Everybody said it. Stop throwing the stupid change up, please. But also, what we talked about with like Dylan Cease, you saw those big like 12, you know, uh, 12K per nine, which Blake Snell had. Walks are a little bit stupid, a little bit over three, but that's Dylan Cease. And why not get a guy that you get in the 30s? Why not get Dylan Cease at 36 on Fantasy Pros ADP, then paying 13 for it? A lot of win context is there as well you've got Juan Soto's in there Bogart's in there defensively I think they look better you're going to put Tatis out in right field Kim at second Bogart's is in it short I think 
I think the wins can pop up. I think we can get to 15, 16 wins, 12K per nine. Hopefully he stops throwing that stupid change up and just gets back to everything else. And Blake okay. Snell really does have the potential to be a top 15 SP this year. So I think he's a must have coming in post top 30 SPs. All right. Save the best for mm-hmm. last. Nick Pollock, the floor is yours. Who are your three must have guys for 23? So it was Christian Javier. I think he's Spencer Strider, but just a different name. Uh, it was Joe <laughs> Ryan. Love that oh, one. Oh, really? That's it was a Joe Ryan. Joe Ryan, Ryan, Joe Ryan. He has a new sweeper um, that I, I like think he was working too. on. Uh, fastball is fantastic. The twins clearly like it with with him there. He, he's going to be able to start and go longer than most of their twins pitchers. And it's a good offense there. The whole situation is just, yeah, I'll have Joe Ryan as my SP four or five because he's going past everybody else. Is at 46? I'd rather have him than Luzardo and Chris Sale and Lucas Giolito and whatnot. This is a sturdy arm that's going to get me value through the year, while the other ones are much more riskier. So much riskier, I should say. So I love them. Luis Severino, I want to love, but the injury is there. Shane McClanahan is so interesting because I was worried about the injury, not worried about the injury. Now I'm I think I'm not worried about the injury. So yeah, sign me up for Shane McClanahan. Logan Gilbert doesn't have the secondary stuff. I We have a funny thing with uh, Fast where he does the image of Bart Simpson writing on the chalkboard. I will not believe in a pitcher because of a new pitch in the spring. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Logan Gilbert, the splitter, is the latest one for us, right? Um, but mm-hmm. I'm very excited about that. Blake Snell profiles out as one of the highest PLV guys we have. Um, his stuff is just insanely good. The changeup oh, does man. seem to be gone. Problem is health with Blake Snell, I believe, oh. um, and consistency. Um, so I still want Blake Snell. I actually have him right around 34, 36, so I can match it. But I want to chase him. It's just riskier, I feel like, than I can. So my three are George Kirby, who has a better fastball, in my view, um, than uh, Logan Gilbert. Eno believes it's Logan Gilbert, so what do I know? But I think it's George Kirby's 19% swing strike rate against righty last year, which is insanely good. Um, and then he also feel, I feel like he's so close with his secondary stuff that he could really just run away with it and be a stud tomorrow. Um, Hunter green has the same skill sets as Javier, um, and Strider broke our models. Um, early projections had him as like a sub two ERA with us until we had to adjust properly. But Hunter green is like, to me, ready to break out. He actually didn't allow a single hit with his fastball when he elevated it in the second half of last year. All of his hits were on fastballs that were low. I mean, that's just, that's insane. Um, And then the last one, who's actually at 62 right now, is Reed Detmers. I really believe that Reed Detmers is ready for a breakout. He's, I believe, going to turn 23 this year. He's super young. He has a a, a really good curveball he can get in the zone and fastball he can elevate. And when we saw him succeed last year, it was when his slider was getting whiffs. I remember chasing it from the beginning of the year, thinking, okay, when Demers gets his whiffs on a slider, he'll be successful. Didn't quite have it in the beginning. Got super lucky in that no-hitter. Went to the minors, fixed it. Fixed it with his shoulders. His mechanics came back and had the slider whiffs and was dominant. He was an ace for like six weeks. It was amazing. And then he ran into some trouble. I think a little bit of fatigue for the young guy by the end of the uh-huh. year. I think this is it. I think he's he's gone through the adversity, made the tweak they need to do, showcase that he can fail and then succeed again. Reed Detmers is ready to soar for the Angels, and he goes much later in drafts than the other guys. So I find myself getting Detmers wherever I can. I think it's funny because you said you were going to put Ryan on your list. I almost put Detmers on mine. So that there was, you go. there you go. It's a love fest here at the show. Nick Pollock, <laughs> you're the best of the best. Please, everybody, go follow him on the Twitter machine at Pitcher List and go check out PL Pro on pitcherlist.com it's going to be fantastic if nick and his team are doing it you know it's going to be high quality uh i have a question i have a question nick have you decided on the stat Uh, have we decided on the stat oh i know what what are we calling the stat for justin mason since you passed oh it's i it's plvg plvg so instead of a u to say plug it's plvg yeah Yeah, okay and is it i think we might have to change it to plug I think I think we might have to change that to LUG. You can do that. Yeah, that's fine. And not no X in front of it. I feel like if you just you know that PLV exists, you might not know that the G is not real. We're gonna put a picture list on it. We're gonna be like we had Nick on and we talked about the uh, PLUG (laughs) stat, and we're we're gonna have to do it like that and see if he falls. We're gonna do that. Wait, we'll see if uh, Justin Mason uh, passes the test. And don't forget, you can watch that live on our YouTube. Subscribe today. I see already we're getting a ton of new subscribers. Welcome aboard. If you make a comment again on this show today, 
one lucky person is going to get upgraded to fantasy pros premium but if you don't want to wait again fantasypros.com slash premium go sign up get all of the premium tools that'll help you with the draft wizard again a mock a day keeps losing away so go to fantasypros.com slash draft wizard or just download the app and get your mock draft on get ready for the season with all this knowledge that the welsh myself and of course nick pollock are giving you and tune in and join us live 4 p.m eastern thursday roto mock draft season is upon us gentlemen great stuff as always so fun to talk congrats to you Nick. All. congrats on all the yes. stuff at uh, pitcher list oh, thank you guys yes, so much for having me happen to a better you. guy with better hair and that'll do it for us but the story of the game goes on for nick and welsh i'm joey p we'll see you next time kids